All right, so this is going to be a video on developing the skull, which um, you could also substitute as a head construction, and then from there building up the, um, the features, the fat or the structural fat, and getting a sense for how all of those things build together. And then um, the very last is adding lighting. So it's primarily going to be a uh, you know, more drawing than it is explanatory and talking. But the goal here is just to give um, a bit of a idea or <clears throat> demonstration on how to go about working with some of the, the ideas that we've talked about prior, prior. So start out with my skull and the alternative to this would be you can do a head construction. So you don't have to draw a skull. Uh, it could be the whatever kind of head construction you like. It could even be one that you've kind of modified to suit your own taste, your own comfort level. It doesn't matter. There really isn't a, a right or wrong way. And uh, no real um, reason for the image. I just wanted to find something that had clear planes. David Fincher always has interesting camera work and um, storytelling or value, lighting, so it appealed to me for that reason. Um, Seven's a, a good movie, um, something I'll always kind of turn on or change the channel to if it is on. So for that reason, it's just kind of something that appealed to me. And so when I'm drawing the skull, um, you know, I do a lot of skull studies just from you know, usually just carrying around that little anatomy tools uh, sculpt that is of a human skull, male and female. Um, so if anybody has an interest in kind of working more directly with the, the skull, you know, maybe even not doing the head construction quite as much, you feel like you've gotten to a place where you don't have to kind of rely on an abstract construction system and can go right for a skull, then this might be a good um, at least challenge for yourself for a little while. So proportions, say my half for the nose, then the brow, half between brow and nose is sockets, and then half between sockets and brow is the eyes, and then thirds down here. And now I'm going to do some, some work around the eye sockets, so kind of leaning the sides down, kind of give a better and cleaner. It's nice that he doesn't have hair, I guess, because there's a get a better sense for what the skull's up to. And you know, like I'll change my lines or darken lines as I feel like they have a little bit more confidence as to where something should end up. This is the, the sunglass shape of the socket, the inside plane. Temple. Here's the cheekbone. That's coming in. So if you can, sometimes you can incorporate um, you know, construction qualities into your skull, like uh, rhythm lines, kind of drawing across. So here's the socket on this side. And I don't really care too much about the likeness in this one. That's uh, the the point for for this should be to see how well you can understand some of the makeup of the face. What is the skull? What is the what is subcutaneous fat? What is structural fat? How is cartilage behaving? How might it be specific to male or female? Uh, and unless you're kind of really comfortable with all of those, I, I wouldn't put likeness at the top just yet. Uh, so nasal aperture is in here, can frame that out. And then if I were to kind of look for specifics, kind of look at the shape of the nose up top, how wide is it? Pretty traditional European shape for the nasal aperture, looks like to me. Let's 
where the skull is turning, or the cheek is turning. You can see a little highlight there in that area. And this is going to start to pull. Uh, this area is just more of that kind of concave, concave section to the, the cheek. And then all of this will start to kind of bend in into the, the muzzle or the denture sphere. Again, I'm looking for you know, an imagined center for the eye lining up with the canine. So that's a point where I'll be looking to see where the nose, I mean, sorry, where the, the mouth turns. And then this is going to be the just a basic rough for the, the teeth. I don't need to do too much just because drawing out the teeth isn't going to make a difference really as long as the idea of the, the mass is there. And kind of fixing the mandible, getting a better sense of its, its placement or position. So back would be in here. And then we would see um, if all of this is pulling down, we see in the back of the teeth or the molars and the premolars back here. Filling in that shape or rounded shape for the mouth. And then on this side. So the reason again we're doing the, the skull, or I'm doing the skull, is because um, in the prior videos or classes we looked at head construction. So this is now just something to give you an additional example for uh, customizing the way that you want to work. The way you want to develop your own process here. And then uh, let's look at his jawline, see if we can do some, do our best to match some of these. So it looks like it's kind of rounded. It's not uh, like heroic in the sense that it's really squared off. It's, it's a weaker jawline, I guess, or he has a rounder face. It's kind of like the, the softening that. I started out with something really angular and squared. So to soften. And then if we had our, our spine, that would be in here. Head's kind of turning. Spine would be pointing this way. So that's my cervical column. And then when I'm done with this, I'm going to turn the opacity down and then use this as a template to start to think about you know, features or aspects of the features. Um, but I think this would be enough, right? Anything after this would just be like cutting or rendering, you know, putting like hatching or that kind of thing. So let's um, shift gears. Let's turn this down a bit so that we don't have to be too preoccupied with it when we develop on top. Okay. And so what we'll do now is start to just add some some basic ideas for Features and fat, um, and we'll do you know, just kind of focus on one. Let's do this side because this, is, you know, in the the homework, I think it would be to your benefit to try to do both, but it's probably going to be redundant for me to do it. So I'm going to do the fat and the features on this side. It's a symmetrical expression, so you don't have to worry about anything being different one side to the other. So on this side, we'll put features and fat. And then on the left side, I'm going to do lighting. And if you want to do your homework this way or draw your heads this way, it's fine. Okay, so if we start here in the, um, the area of the eye, this class or this week, uh, one of our areas of discussion was you know, the fat around the eye. And um, so just going to lay in basic shapes around the eye. So here's lateral central, nasal fat, which is this whole thing. And then the lacrimal gland on the outside. There would be the, you know, women would have more of the roof. Don't have that here. There's soup fat underneath. So these are all of the areas that we talked about. And so I'm just going to put one kind of uniform tone around them so you give an idea or you remember the basics of what we talked about and then over this is how we we developed our eye or what we looked at 
And we started that from thinking about what is the ligament or what is its direction? It's a, is it horizontal? Is it uplifted? And then from there, we started to try to attach a square or a, a rectangle. As soon as that split, it's going to hit the eye and travel with it. So it goes up. And I'm not very good with likenesses, so you're just going to have to go along with that. Here's the, the eye coming up. And then the corner of his eyelid here goes down. And uh, one of the things we discussed when the eyelids is that there's a thickness to them. Um, and if you have it like mine, where it's pretty small, um, a thickness could just be a, a line weight, like a thicker line could suggest that this is top and then bottom, right? So out and then back. And all this up here is softer, right? So he, maybe he has some of that fat in this area. And then one of the other important things that we kind of looked at for the structure of the socket was how this side has a prominence and a forward prominence in space. And then as you move in, that the eye socket on this side goes back. So it's kind of a push and pull. One side comes out, one side goes back. So this part's going to look like this. So while I'm thinking of all of this is kind of recessed. So for now, let's just kind of show this as having a tone. And then we could see um, how this you know, gets light in that area. We could place a brow for him too. So just as a basic shape. Um, my brow right here. It's furrowed. If anything, his expression is kind of um, bewilderment, or he's he's uh, anticipating with a shock. I guess this is um, right after the box is delivered. And then for the lower lid, I want to do the same thing. Start at the, the point of the split for the ligament. Then your lower lid comes across as a peak which is asymmetrical to the upper lid, then it goes back up and in. So that is the eye in terms of the, the outline or the mapping. If you want to get your pupil, I always do a little crosshair, kind of like this. And then I'll use that as a guide to help make a, a nicer ellipse or circle. And you can see that the upper lid on this one casts that shadow across the top of the eye. And so that's grouping with the pupil. So like all of this, that's the importance of knowing, you know, some of the, the planes or the depth of different qualities in the feature because now you have a better idea of what that lighting is. And that's why this class we've been looking at lighting and analytical drawing because they're, <clears throat> they're mutual reinforcing kind of complementary aspects to the drawing process. And then the lower lid, so just to give like the, the thickness to this part. And then, you know, the fat that we would see underneath it is he's a little older or middle aged. So that means we're starting to see you know, the orbital septum weakening a little bit, maybe. So we just have some noticeable mass or kind of emphasis on the, the fat there. If we kind of work our way down, so I give a little big darker value here. And it kind of looks like he has brown. Good enough. Okay, so then we're going to work into uh, the cheek as we kind of find our way down to the nose. Cheek is malar, and look how it's made that parallel shape. So if I go right from here out, I'm going to follow that shadow line down on this side. Nasal labial furrow at the bottom is found by getting this malar. So all of this is 
going to end right at the smile or the zygomatic muscle. So it kind of goes like this, and its curvature is reflecting the idea of its um, travel across the muzzle. So let's put this here in orange. And so the question then might be, well, what's happening to the right of it? And that is all cheekbone. So here's where the fat is ending. You can see it's held in this area. You have this line from the malar coming over. And then there's a half tone that kind of comes right in through here into highlight. And so the little highlight is that cashew shape or the turn of the masoteric ridge. So you have our temple, comes down, kind of meets in this area. Normally the malar would be, um, if you're younger, would be spread all the way up. And so it's only when it starts to kind of drop that we get this shape or we age. And then the fat that would sit under the eye slides off that. And then that could be a, re a reason we would get this little triangle uh, half tone there. So all this stuff is kind of moving around. So that's information that we talked about around the cheek. And then let's take a look at the nose. Uh, let's also put on an ear. I think that's something I might have left out this week. So ear, I'm going to look to play, place it in the same type of proportion that we discussed. And it could be a C shape. It's always brow to, to nose. So here's a C. You can always try to look for the specific C for a person if I can. Um, and then you could also you try to use maybe four to five lines if you want and give it something that's a bit more planar. So like one, two, three, four. I think this sometimes can help you if you're struggling with ears because it forces you to work in straights. I think usually the, the best curves or the, the most beautifully designed curves are built from straights. Uh, and then you'll get more familiar with individual likenesses. And then here's the cartilage. So cartilage goes back. And then for the ear, so if we draw one for the side here, I think of a Y. So first we have this big shape. And then inside a Y. So this make it simple, kind of diagrammatic so you can remember it easier. A Y. The lobe is kind of an egg. So you could have, um, you could even think of it like a question mark with a Y. And then on the inside, you have like a little wave, or you can make like a C curve or a wave here. And so try to find little symbols that you can help remember what these more complicated structures from. And then if you can remember something dumb like that, then it's easy for you to customize to different people's ears. It's like a, a language of ear that you generalize and then customize to make it feel like a person or the person that you're currently drawing. And I'll just leave this as a big shape. And then any type of um, curvature here was the temporalis. We talked about that. That would be if we did a little muscle shape. I kind of talked about how there's a clamshell muscle here or a word bubble. It's kind of tucked in this area. It has these striations that all pull down behind. So they go behind the, the cheek or, and then show up down here in its connection to the inside of the jaw. So that fills in that area. Now let's do a little bit of work around the nose. So keystone is up here. Um, I could probably adjust it. His looks a little bit thinner. Doesn't have to be like the uh, trapezoid shape perfectly. And then I think it, it looks reasonable enough to keep his nasal saddle there. The septum uh, and position for his nose is just off center. It's kind of like barely three quarter. And when we did this one, we 
try to use the colors that are consistent to the lecture that we went through. Let's see if we could use them like a some kind of blue. So spine, the tip of the nose is kind of out here. And maybe you could see the highlight there would be one good indication. Um, I'm just going to start out with a basic construction like description of the perspective or the housing for the nose. So all of this is an underplane. And then corner of the eye should line up with the wing or the outside of the nose. So that would be something I could, I could help double check with. And then come up to the keystone for doing our construction drawings. And then what is the, how would the cartilage style this together? Well, he's got a pretty smooth nose. So the, the alar cartilage here would be without a lot of dramatic changes. And then stops about here, ties over. And then the alar cartilage towards the end or the tip of the nose is rounded. So this our our ball or our thought, thought bubble and then the comma, or let's say the tail for the thought bubble goes down and creates the septum. It also creates the kind of the turn of the nostril there at the bottom. And then the back was fat. So this is a little bell shaped piece of structural fat that ties the nose to the face. So that's um, the two things that we looked at or three things we looked at for the nose. Just color them in. That's the first one. This is the second one. Then the bell was the third. And so for this, what you could still use, you know, when you're looking at your lighting is that's the corner of the box. I've just covered it with that cartilage and that's right where the highlight is because highlights always affect or sit on corners. Here's the top of the cartilage in that kind of pronounced area form on the ball of the nose. It's a highlight. And the highlight also kind of comes down the middle. And then there's a highlight on this corner, and that's right where that box ends, or the cartilage ends. And so that makes a plane change, highlight here. So on this side that's more you know, diagrammatic, I'm just putting highlights to help areas of form turn or, or read a little bit more easily. Let's make sure this has a, a, a clearer color just to make sure that the, the reference for the fat is separated from the nose and the, the muscle. Um, to go with the muscle, this line is the masseter, so it would be the chewing muscle, and it's a little stretched because his mouth is kind of agape or dropped. So kind of follow this, the, the malar fat. You can see there's a, a line here, and because it's starting to open, or his mouth starting to open, we would see the shape of the masseter as essentially an S-curve. So that would be here. That's the, the corner that you're seeing. And then kind of working our way down even more so if we look at the lips. So first thing let's notice in terms of form is um, malar creates this big nasolabial furrow. Okay, so the way I'm thinking of this is kind of it's like a box and then there's a corner and then you're on to the mouth. And then when that ends, then we would be onto the buccal fat. So that's again, right where that zygomatic line or zygomatic major, there's buccal fat, it's got some. So that would be this part. Let's give that a blue, or some kind of gray color, just so it's separated from some of those other shapes. And then the gel fat was the very last one that we talked about, but we don't have much here to, to kind of use. Now, when I'm looking for the node for the corner of the mouth, you can again drop right under the eye. So that's here, that's the, you know, the tendon that's getting pulled around by muscles in the mouth and creating a pinch in the face. And then you can see this is, that's fat too. That's one of the things that we might have mentioned at the very end of our lecture. Um, it's not, as common, but this would be fat. So it's kind of over the corner, top corner of the, the node of the mouth. So there. Um, other things that we looked at that were important for the, the mouth was 
Uh, if you have your nose established, you can notice that, you know, one thing I do is work from top to bottom. It's not a bad idea to start out here with the philtrum shape. You know, it's a shape that helps you or lets you to see um, some symmetry. And so you can you know, work your way from the nose, keeping that track or in check. And then we're having the, the lips just start right underneath it. And then on this side, so the lips as a shape still, even if the lips are parted, still go with the surface. I mean, the only thing that might be problematic or difficult is that you don't get one uniform curve to base them on. Right, so instead of sharing this wrapping line with the top and the bottom and the closed mouth, um, I'm going to have to do one for each. And so here's the, the lip. And I try to think of the lips as having those three planes, front and sides. So it might be a, a useful way to think of the turning. So that's just a, a light indication for the node on that side. Here's the, the center peak of the mouth. And then this is doing something different. So now when I draw the mouth here, it's going to go this way. And I'm thinking of wrapping the other way. It comes down and wraps this way. And then a lot of this I'm going to be able to, um, I'm going to use shadow, right? The, the cache and the form shadow to explain the, the mouth. But here we would also see, you know, that there's the top. Just like where the lip for the plane or the ideas of plane here would be mouth comes out, lip goes back. Here we have the, the open mouth, upper lip, or the top plane of the lower lip comes forward. And then right where that highlight breaks, then all of this starts to go back or the muscle or skin around the lips. That's also why the face turns into shadow right here. And then from this point, now we're looking at, you know, like that upside down philtrum or keystone shape, which is that space under the mouth, which tends to be kind of hollowed or vacant. And then we're onto a chin. And then once we're here, we can kind of relook or reassess the chin, think about the jaw, you know, did I get the right shapes or the shapes that I was looking for? Because it's, it's not always just going to be like a one shot. I do a lot of adjusting. So that would be the stuff this week that you would want to look at for, you know, the development of features or the information for how we're going to see and, and develop a better understanding for features. Now on this side, let's, let's stick to these being basic forms like um, primary forms, spheres, boxes, cylinders. Um, and we're going to light both sides so that you can see you know, how much getting a good sense of lighting is really dependent on um, you know, being knowledgeable of, of the form. And we'll leave you know, the muscle of the neck for another time. So here, let's do our adjustment. We don't need all of this. Just want enough so that we could kind of think about what's there while we do some some lighting on top. I'm going to get a, a more gradated brush, or just the spray paint brush, the stock one. I don't use anything fancy, mostly because I don't know how to. And so here is now the the lighting part. So lighting comes from top top front. Um, is something a ball, a cylinder, or a sphere is the challenge. So here, this is a ball. Let's get a more dark. So I want this to be a, a noticeable corner. Okay, doesn't look right. Okay. This is a sphere. This I want to be as gradated as I can get it so that it feels like it's becoming the light to shadow without any type of rapid interruption. So that's kind of, and it's also, you know, one thing to keep in mind, my core shadows are always S or C curves because they're trying to describe the form. 
here he has, um, this is more of like a firm edge and it's going across that superciliary arch. You can see that really well on him. And then the furrow of the brow. So here you have this like 11, you know, sometimes women or men get this and they'll not want to Botox it. So that's the effect of kind of furrowing the brow. When you furrow the brow, um, you can have muscles that pull this way. So it can cause a pinch. Um, and you can also lift muscles this way to cause like a, a raise or elevation. Um, so that would be what's creating little like cylinders there, right? So imagine this is because there's skin kind of being furrowed or muscle being pinched here, you get these um, cylinders across. And so if we think of it that way, then we can think, well, yeah, this should be a firm edge. And then when that's done, then it casts a shadow onto the middle part. So that's all casting. And then at the very bottom, you know, cast, and then it then it becomes form shadow again. So it's just that rote formula of repetition, form cast, form cast, hard, soft, hard, soft. And then on this, this also casts. So then on to the brow. So that's my, my map, right? I'm just starting out, working my way across. I'm gonna do the whole thing. Um, here's the brow. I can maybe go a little softer here if we think it's rounder or if I just want to show that, you know, the brow is a different texture. So maybe that's the top and then here it could um, pinch and cast. And it's casting down and then onto the top of the eye. And so this is, um, this is the cast, then this is the form shadow, the turn of that lid, and then it's casting a shadow into the, the structure of the space of the eye, and it comes in, groups with the cast shadow from the lid into the, the iris or onto the iris and pupil or sphere of the eye. And then all of this kind of lose it, and then it sends a cast shadow out over the top lid and then this becomes a form shadow, which is describing either the sphere of the ball, I'm sorry, the sphere of the, the sphere of the eye or the fat. And then when that's done, then we get another cast shadow. It goes across the fat, goes up, and this gets really sharp. It's now describing the planes of the malar and nose. Um, it comes up high here. Cast shadow over the nasal saddle. Cast shadow down the side plane. And then we're going to go down the cylinder or box of the nose, depends on the person's nose. Let's say that's a cylinder. And then it gets a little firmer here where the cartilage might separate. And then at the very end, it becomes much more sphere like again because the malar here is around it. It's around. And then this gets a little bit sharper. That's starting to pull down towards the septum septum and then this is getting some light on the, the side pulls around now we're lighting the bottom of the cylinder with maybe the nostril there and then the back again is that fat and that comes up pretty high okay. um, now we're doing let's light the malar so the malar is that piece right here it's going to be a box so that edge is going to be i think to start sharper and then as it gets lower, it feels a little more rounded. So I'm going to blur that or give it a softer edge. And then once I do my form shadow, then I'm going to do cast. So cast shadow looks like this. I want to push the difference between these. And then that ends down here. It gives that little shape like that. And then let's add some halftone up here. So halftone just for the, the change of plane from the eye to the malar half tone and maybe like a little bit of a cast shadow. Uh, let's not forget the ear. So these are all going to be hard edges because there's mostly sharper plane changes in the ear. Smaller forms are sharper. This is a little bit softer because we're lighting the cylinder of the Y. And cast shadow shape looks like this. And like a few smaller forms, and then the bottom is the sphere.
a better idea for the jaw. And then since I'm here, I can see uh, there's a cast shadow. I'm not going to give all the wrinkles in the neck. I'm just going to do one that shows the direction of the throat and then how it starts to gradate as a cylinder this way. That's enough. Um, cast shadow from the nose. We jump back here, comes out, across. This becomes a form shadow for the philtrum. And then the continuation for the cast shadow goes up. Here's a little thread shape or thread-like shape. And now we're lighting the mouth. The top corner of the upper lip leaves a shape like that. This philtrum shape kind of fills in the rest. And then we're just onto the form shadow of the lip. So it'd be like this. Form shadow of the lip. And then if we look here, this, I think it's called the modialis, this area of fat is getting a form shadow and then it's casting a shadow onto the upper lip. It's also down here, casting a shadow up and into the top plane of the lower lip. Like this. And then we have a cast shadow across the upper um, portion of the lower lip from the upper lip. So that kind of comes out. There's a little bit of a kind of like a divot, and then it comes across, and then it becomes a form shadow. And that I'm thinking of like a cylinder. Okay. Then it ends. This part is softer, so I'm going to make this more of a ball because this is a fuller area of the muscle, blocking all the light there. And then this becomes a cast shadow that goes over the chin. So it's a wrapping line. And then the chin is a ball, just gets lit on the top corner. So I'm gonna bend the form shadow across it like that. And then a little bit of a form shadow for the jawline. And then we're starting to connect up our map. Right, that's most of it. Okay, so last part would just be to fill things in and then you would have a beginning for your light and shadow. When, once you have the light and shadow as a starting point, um, you know, your middle value, your dark value, your light value, then you would go in and develop half tones in the areas that you want to have read as a focal point. All right, so this one then we can start filling in. So I'm just picking one value and filling it in slightly lighter than the core shadow edge. So here, just fill this in. Filling in the shapes around the 11. There's the whole, I'm gonna put all of this side into shadow. And then don't be afraid to kind of bring things past the um, outline. It's fine to do some atmosphere. Usually it looks a little bit better. And then filling in these shapes. Here's the nasal furrow. Here's the shapes that I've created for the lips. Here's the shape underneath. There's probably a faster way to do this. You could just like select it all and give it a value, but it usually goes fast enough if I'm if I'm not talking or demonstrating. And so that would be it, right? That would be all you'd have to do. If this feels like it's like not reading as well as you'd like it to, that's okay. This is just the exercise for this week. Um, taking this a step further would be like, you know, trying to paint it out. And in painting it out, I'm thinking of things like, well, you know, where do I want the attention to be? Um, like I already have a lot of information in the lights. So maybe on the light side of the face, I would add a half tone value, you know, something that kind of, I could even tone that mid band of the face. That's the the warm band as opposed to the cool band here. And then, you know, from this half tone, add some areas of highlight or, um, usually I'll, I'll not develop or I won't develop the lights and the darks. I'll just choose one side. And then here we could bring out some of that, that form by picking out highlights or, or whatnot. But I usually try to, I think for this assignment, it'd be good to stick to just 
three values, three or four values. I mean, you can, if you want, you can add a, a lighter and a darker in the face, but that's not so much the, the value. The value of the assignment would be to see how each stage of the drawing process allows you to understand something um, in advance, right? Something that comes next, like construction and tonal mapping aren't different things. It's really all the same stuff. It's just people decide to edit and bracket information and then kind of become synonymous with a way of thinking, but it's all the same stuff. So here would be a light on the mouth. To bring out some highlights around the, the lip. There's a bright light on the malar, gets a plane facing out. So I'm not much of a digital painter, but the basic idea here is one of drawing and just seeing how you know, tone and form line up. Um, so that's it. Hopefully it's helpful. Again, this is more or less what I would uh, ask you to try for homework to see how all these things fit together.